This presentation content has been created by Eclipse Security LLC for Microsoft Corporation. For any questions or comments, please email inquiries at eclipsesecuritylc.com. The Security Code Review Level 200 presentation introduces the role that the Microsoft Security Development Lifecycle fulfills in trusted application development. It also provides an overview of the Security Code Review process which is the manual inspection of application source code for security vulnerabilities. Examples of how to review code for common security vulnerabilities and security code review recommendations from the Microsoft SDL are also presented. Addressing the subject matter will enable our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. Please note that it is recommended that the presentations addressing the following topics be reviewed addressed prior to this presentation. Those presentations are buffer overflows, SQL injection, and cross-site scripting. In this presentation, we will complete an overview of the Microsoft SDL, the security code review process, security code review examples addressing buffer overflow, SQL injection, and cross-site scripting concerns, and security code review recommendations prescribed by the Microsoft SDL. The Microsoft SDL is a holistic and comprehensive approach that leverages education, process, technology, and executive commitment to consistently create more secure software internally within and external of Microsoft. Since 2004, all internal Microsoft developers have been required to adhere to the SDL, and Microsoft has updated the SDL every six months to address any emerging threats since its inception. True to its name, the SDL was created to complement, rather than disrupt, the software development lifecycle. The core phases and principles of the SDL include the training phase, the requirements phase, the design phase, the implementation phase, the verification phase, the release phase, and finally the response phase. In the training phase, every Microsoft developer must complete mandatory security training focusing on secure application development practices. Training sessions include topics such as threat modeling, secure development and testing practices, and security for application development managers. In the requirement phase, requirements for security and privacy must accompany functional requirements of the software that's being created. Such requirements may include the use of encryption, authentication, and other security measures based on the business requirements exposure, and sensitive data. To that end, a security and privacy risk analysis is performed at this stage. In addition, the threshold for security and privacy, or bug bar, is defined during this phase to ensure that bugs with certain severity are addressed and resolved before the software is officially released. For the design phase, eradicating coding bugs with security implications is not sufficient. Design vulnerabilities can have a substantial detrimental impact on security and are much more difficult to address during the verification phase. To that end, threat modeling is a critical SDL requirement and a Microsoft security innovation that is recognized by analysts as the next evolution in creating more secure software. Through threat modeling, architects and developers at Microsoft are able to approach security in a structured and methodical way from an attacker's perspective. This allows Microsoft to identify and reduce attack surface and mitigate the risk of potential security design issues. The implementation phase is the application code development phase where code is written by developers using industry best practices and analyzed with both internal and external tools such as static code analyzers and special security debuggers to help ensure that those best practices are being followed. Requirements are also specified by the SDL in this phase to ensure that applications are built using the latest compiler versions and built-in compiler protection features. The verification phase is a quality assurance phase within which rigorous security testing is conducted in addition to typical functional testing procedures. In the release phase, the final security review is the major milestone that a Microsoft product team must pass in order to release a product under the SDL. During this meeting, security experts and the development team review all of the activities 
mitigations, and security artifacts that are relevant to the project in order to ensure that the security quality requirements are satisfied. During this phase, the product team defines a response plan describing procedures, accountabilities, and contact information in case security vulnerabilities are discovered after the product is operational and used by the customers. In the response phase, after an application is released, the Microsoft Security Response Center, or MSRC, handles any security issues that are uncovered in the weld and mobilizes product teams within Microsoft to provide timely fixes for security issues. In summary, secure software development requires executive commitment, ongoing process improvement, education and training from VPs to product managers to developers to testers, tools to aid in detecting security vulnerabilities, and incentives and consequences to ensure everyone adheres to the SDL process. As was previously indicated, this presentation focuses on security code review and how it can be used to complement other security assessment activities as prescribed by the Microsoft SDL. With respect to specific phases of the Microsoft SDL, this presentation focuses on the implementation and verification phases. Building safer and more trusted applications that can better withstand attack from today's threat landscape requires strong security strategy. One highly effective method that should be part of almost every security regimen is the security code review process. Security code review involves a manual inspection of an application to identify security vulnerabilities at the code level. Security code reviews are best conducted when an application is nearing a stable state and the possibility of future code changes are minimal. This is recommended so as to minimize the amount of wasted efforts that application development teams will have to expend reviewing code that will significantly change. It is in part for this reason why security code reviews are conducted towards the final stages of the Microsoft SDL verification phase, called the security push. More about this important phase will be discussed later in this presentation. Oftentimes, security code reviews are performed solely by security analysts. However, given the size and complexity of modern applications, security testing should ideally be performed by developers, testers, and security analysts. Application team developers and testers provide familiarity with the application's design and implementation that can aid in identifying vulnerabilities that may be contrary to the overall intended functionality. Security analysts can perform security code review efforts that are free from assumptions and previously established biases in order to help identify vulnerabilities that are outside the overall intended functionality of the application. Lastly, the insights gleaned by Microsoft, which are incorporated in its SDL, and more specifically in this presentation focusing on security code review, are being shared with each of you as a way for our organization to enhance our application development best practices and the security of our applications. If you are new to the concept of security code review, the easiest way to conceptualize this security assessment process is to imagine the role of a publication editor. When an author submits written text, such as a book, news article, or white paper for publication, an editor will review that text prior to release. This is to ensure that the final publication is of the highest possible quality. As part of the editorial process, each line of the text is reviewed for errors, such as grammatical errors, inappropriate language usage, and other aspects that might affect the overall quality of the text. Feedback from the editors is provided back to the authors, and they amend the text as necessary. In the same fashion that an editor will review written text for errors, developers, testers, and security analysts review application code for vulnerabilities that could negatively affect the quality of the application ultimately being delivered to the customers. Vulnerabilities such as buffer overflows, SQL injection, and cross-site scripting are flagged by review teams and addressed by developers prior to releasing the application. With the availability of automated code analysis tools such as Microsoft FXCOP and Microsoft Prefast, which can scale and analyze code much faster than human reviewers, a question that you may have is, are manual security code reviews really necessary? Any assessment method, including the use of code analysis tools, has specific strengths and weaknesses. 
In the case of code analysis tools, certain vulnerabilities may be easily detected while other types of vulnerabilities are difficult to detect. There may be a gap between risks that are detectable by code analysis tools and actual risks present. No one assessment method by itself is sufficient to comprehensively assess the security posture of an application. This is why the Microsoft STL implements a variety of different assessment methods at various stages throughout the software development lifecycle to help development teams deliver applications that are safer and more trustworthy. To illustrate this point, let's look at a demonstration of a code vulnerability that is difficult for code analysis tools to detect, but easily detectable through conducting a security code review. In this demonstration, you will see some sample code that contains two buffer overflow vulnerabilities. One of the vulnerabilities will be detectable by code analysis tools, and the other will not be. This demonstration is meant to show the importance of implementing both security code review and code analysis tools, and not to use one as a replacement for the other. Let's begin and view the sample code. This file is a sample C application that has two functions defined in addition to the main entry point tmain. Both of these functions can be exploited in some way to support a buffer overflow attack. However, only one of these buffer overflows is detectable by standard code analysis tools, while the other is not. This function, named buffer overflow stir copy, contains a standard buffer overflow using the stir copy function. It allocates a fixed length character buffer on the stack and tries to write data passed in by the stir argument into the static buffer. This second function called copy buffer that performs essentially the same function as the stir copy function. It takes a destination buffer argument named dest and a source buffer argument named source and copies the contents of source into dest using a while loop. It makes the incorrect assumption that the contents of source is null terminated and that the size of source will fit within the boundaries of dest. If a caller is not careful when calling this function, a buffer overflow attack may be possible. Let's now run code analysis tools against the sample code and see what happens. Notice how the code analysis tool has detected the buffer overflow and buffer overflow stir copy function, but not the one in the copy buffer function. If the caller of copy buffer is not careful to ensure that source is null terminated and that the size of source fits within the boundaries of dest, then a buffer over overflow attack is possible through this function. This reinforces the notion that code analysis tools cannot replace security code review and vice versa. Both are important components in every application development team's security strategy and should not be used as a replacement for the other. Security code reviews, like any other risk assessment method, has several pros and cons. One key advantage of security code reviews is that a deeper analysis is possible than that which is possible with other security assessment methods. Since the code is entirely visible to the reviewer, the need to make certain assumptions that other methods may apply is reduced, and thus the number of false positives and false negatives are also reduced. Reviewers can also draw upon their personal experiences and expertise in certain technologies that may be difficult for automated methods to emulate. Essentially, the security code review process will be able to identify certain vulnerabilities that other assessment methods cannot.
Another advantage of security code reviews is that assessments can be performed in a more context-aware fashion than that which is possible with machine-based methods. Human reviewers have the distinct advantage in that they are able to interact with the architects and developers of an application. Through this interaction, they can gain a better understanding of, of the application, such as the intent of the application, valid user scenarios and dependencies, and make more meaningful reports and recommendations. Having this understanding allows reviewers to better determine critical components of the application and focus efforts on those areas rather than on less critical components. In addition to the advantages of employing a security code review process, there are certain disadvantages of which you should be aware. One key limitation of the security code review process is that it is a manually intensive process. Human error and fatigue may become factors when reviewing application code, especially when performing a security code review for large applications. Furthermore, with modern day applications easily exceeding hundreds of thousands and sometimes millions of lines of code, Completing a security code review may require a large amount of time and effort, therefore becoming a very expensive proposition. The final notable limitation regarding the security code review process is that the quality of the review is highly dependent upon the skill level and expertise of the reviewer. With code analysis tools, for example, findings are repeatable and can be ar arrived at objectively. However, when conducting a security code review, Findings are not necessarily repeatable and are not always identified in an objective manner. For example, a security code reviewer may be more skilled at finding vulnerabilities in one programming language versus other, or they may be more proficient with a particular type of vulnerability than others. Factors like these will affect the overall quality and sufficiency of the security code review process. As a final note, regarding the advantages and disadvantages of security code reviews. Security code reviews, like any other method for identifying risk in applications, is not a silver bullet. Security code reviews can help you find many security vulnerabilities, but not all possible vulnerabilities. It should never be used as a replacement for other security assessment methods, but rather in conjunction with other methods. Several of the disadvantages of security code review process discussed in the previous slide can be addressed by the following security code review tips. The first tip is to use a multi-pass approach. Many code reviewers make the mistake of trying to conduct a security code review using a single pass. Certainly security code reviews can be formed in this manner, however, with larger applications doing so may prove to be very difficult. Fatigue tends to set in after processing large segments of code, which often increases the chances of errors being introduced into the security code review process. As the name suggests, with a multi-pass approach, application code implementations are reviewed multiple times. Each pass could have a specific objective, such as looking for a particular type of vulnerability. Since reviewers are looking for specific vulnerabilities, such as buffer overflows, SQL injection, and cross-site scripting, rather than all vulnerabilities, each pass can be conducted more quickly and the likelihood of reviewers suffering from fatigue can be reduced. Furthermore, each pass can also be performed by different reviewers to reduce the likelihood of human error. The second tip is to focus security code review efforts on high priority code and then focus security code review efforts on less critical code as time permits. Since security code reviews can become very expensive, prioritizing security code review efforts is an important way to help ensure that critical components have been thoroughly reviewed prior to customer release while staying within available budgets. Further discussion regarding prioritizing application code will be discussed later in this presentation. One common criticism about the security code review process is that it is often performed in an ad hoc manner. With the ad hoc approach, reviewers take an application and begin randomly looking for vulnerabilities without any clear objectives. Certainly security code reviews can be performed in this manner. However, in the absence of documented goals, it is difficult for application development teams to understand the level of coverage that is provided by security code reviews. 
Many questions begin to surface, such as, which vulnerabilities have been considered when conducting this QT code review? To what extent were the vulnerabilities tested? Specifically, which vulnerabilities were not investigated when conducting the security code review? All these questions are difficult to answer when security code reviews are performed in an ad hoc fashion. By first establishing clear security code review objectives and then manually reviewing code against those objectives, application developers can gain more accurate understanding of the security posture of their application. Application teams can then bring in other security assessment methods such as code analysis tools to address other objectives not evaluated by security code review efforts. Example security code review objectives may be to ensure the following. That application code does not ignore return values. That all pointers are checked for validity. And that all untrusted data is validated prior to use. As previously mentioned, Security code reviews are not meant to replace other security assessment activities and should be used as a complementary activity. Code reviews by themselves can be an effective means to identifying security vulnerabilities in code. However, the benefits of security code reviews are amplified when they are done in the context of other security assessment activities. In fact, when security code reviews are performed in conjunction with other assessment activities, the complexity of performing security re code reviews can be greatly decreased therefore reducing the total expense associated with conducting the security code review process. For instance, using automated code analysis tools as recommended by the Microsoft SDL could be performed prior to expending manual review efforts. Using automated code analysis tools introduced the benefit by providing a higher degree of code review coverage. Code analysis tools can also help identify more common and frequently encountered vulnerabilities called low-hanging fruit. Reviewers can then allocate their efforts to address more critical components of the application and to identify more complex and less apparent vulnerabilities. Automated code analysis tools may also provide early indications as to the types of vulnerabilities that are most prevalent in the application code. Security code reviewers can use data from code analysis tools to better define security code review objectives and more effectively focus their efforts during the review process. Another example might be to create threat models prior to using code analysis tools and performing security code reviews. Threat models are used to decompose an application and can help developers, testers, and security analysts to better understand the internals of an application. Threat models also expose critical areas of an application that are most prone to attack. Security code reviews could take that knowledge and focus their efforts on high-risk components of the application and expend less effort on components with minimal risk. Security training materials could be updated to address the types of vulnerabilities encountered through employing a security code review process. This would help better ensure that developers do not introduce the same vulnerabilities into future code. Finally, the lessons learned from performing security code reviews, such as the types of vulnerabilities that are most prevalent for a particular application, could be used to update internal processes. This would help ensure that occurrences of those prevalent vulnerabilities are reduced in future releases of that particular application. Let's now look at some examples of how to review application code for some of today's most common security vulnerabilities, including buffer overflows, SQL injection, and cross-site scripting. The examples presented in the following slide represent common ways by which these types of vulnerabilities manifest in code and is not meant to be an all-encompassing guide. Presentation materials that discuss each of these vulnerabilities in more detail are available and should be reviewed accordingly if you have not already reviewed their contents. Buffer overflows can manifest in a myriad of different ways. Unsafe function calls and unsafe custom code that writes into buffers are some of the common ways that buffer overflows can be present in code. Does this mean that security code reviewers need to know all the possible ways that buffer overflows can be created? Fortunately, the answer is a resounding no. 
All buffer overflows, regardless of the technology or platform being used, manifest whenever an application attempts to write data into a fixed length buffer beyond the bounds of that buffer. By looking for this pattern in code, security code reviewers can more easily find buffer overflows in any platform or technology. Here is some sample C code that implements a function called copy buffer. This function reads a character pointer and allocates a fixed length 32 byte buffer called buffer. Copy buffer then copies the source argument into buffer using a call to stir and copy and restricts the size of that copy to 32 bytes. Finally, copy buffer null terminates buffer by inserting a null terminating character at the last index of buffer. Can you see what's wrong with this code? If the problem is not immediately apparent to you, try applying the pattern above to this code. First, do we have a fixed length buffer that will be written into anywhere in this code? Yes, the destination buffer called buffer is one that fits this criteria. Next, will the code ever try to write beyond the boundary of buffer? The answer again is yes, but not with the call to stir and copy. The overflow occurs when the function tries to null terminate buffer. Take a close look at which element index in buffer gets null terminated. According to the code, the index at size of buffer gets null terminated. The call to size of buffer returns 32. However, buffers in the C and C++ language start at 0 and not at 1. This means that the code is writing a null termination character exactly one byte beyond the bounds of the fixed length buffer called buffer. This is what is known as an off by one buffer overflow and it is exploitable. SQL injection is another common vulnerability. SQL injection vulnerabilities are created in code whenever an application tries to execute a SQL query that has been dynamically built using untrusted data. Similar to the buffer overflow discussion, let's apply this pattern to some sample code to uncover a potential SQL injection vulnerability. Here is some sample C sharp code that defines a method named remove entry. Remove entry accepts two arguments, a string name entry name and a SQL connection object called my connection. Remove entry creates a query to remove a given entry by name and then executes that query using some database server bound to the given SQL connection object. Can you see the potential SQL injection vulnerability in this code? If the problem is not immediately apparent to you, try applying the pattern above to this code. First, is the method building a dynamically built SQL query using untrusted data? Yes, it is. The variable query is dynamically created using the input from the entry name variable. This variable is provided into this function. Therefore, the contents of this variable cannot necessarily be trusted. The second part of the SQL injection pattern is the execution of a dynamically built SQL query. Does this code do that? Yes, it does. Therefore, since the method dynamically creates a SQL query using potentially untrusted data and then tries to execute that query, you know that a SQL injection vulnerability exists in this code. Another common security vulnerability frequently encountered in web-based applications is cross-site scripting. In fact, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities are most common vulnerabilities today. The common pattern among all cross-site scripting vulnerabilities is applications attempting to embed untrusted data in web responses without encoding that data. Here is sample code from an ASP.NET application. The page load method shown here is a method that is called when the ASP.NET application is first loaded. The method reads the value associated with the query string parameter called name key. It then checks to see if the name key value is null or empty, and it, if it is not, it outputs a greeting using the value of name key. Can you see the vulnerability in this method? If the problem is not immediately apparent to you, try applying the pattern above to this code. A cross-site scripting vulnerability occurs at the code highlighted. 
the value from name key is untrusted and the method page load embeds that data in a web response without encoding it first. Security code reviews are done as part of the security push phase of the Microsoft SDL. The security push is a team-wide effort that focuses on updating security documents, performing code reviews, and conducting other risk identification activities. Security pushes begin after a product enters the Microsoft SDL verification phase and when the product feature set and code implementation is nearing completion. Security code reviews are not restricted solely to this phase. It is also recommended that security code reviews be performed during development as code nears completion. Trying to condense a large number of code reviews in a short period of time, such as the security push phase, can negatively affect the quality and integrity of the overall security code review effort. Security code reviews should be done on all Priority 1 code. Priority 1 code is code that is most prone to security vulnerabilities. Guidelines on how to classify code by priority is outlined in the Microsoft SDL Process Guidance Paper and the Microsoft SDL Book. Any component of code that has experienced a large number of security vulnerabilities in the past is also considered Priority 1 code. The definition of large can be highly subjective and will differ from project to project. However, it is still important to review these components as it is more likely that additional security vulnerabilities will be found in code previously having a large number of security vulnerabilities versus components of code that historically have not had many vulnerabilities. If time permits, Priority 2 code should also be reviewed. Priority 2 code is optionally installed code that runs with user privileges. The Microsoft SDL also defines Priority 2 code as any code that does not meet Priority 1 criteria. This concludes the discussion on Security Code Review. Security Code Review is a manual process whereby developers, testers, and security analysts review the source code of an application and make note of any coding patterns that could negatively impact the security posture of that application. At first glance, the security code review process may appear to be an unnecessarily manual duplication of other automated assessment methods, such as code analysis tools. On the contrary, security code reviews are unique in that they take contextual information about an application into account during the review. This helps to enrich the overall review process and has the effect of producing deeper findings and findings that are more relevant to the actual intent of the application. Security code reviews do not negate the need for other security assessment activities. In fact, the benefits from security code review are further amplified when security code reviews are performed in conjunction with and complementary to other security assessment activities. Prioritization, information from threat models, and results from code analysis tools can help to better refine security code review objectives and improve results. Information about the vulnerabilities identified during security code reviews can be used to update training materials and internal processes to help ensure that the occurrence of those vulnerabilities are reduced over time. While Microsoft's ability to continually deliver safer and more trusted applications to its customers through the Microsoft SDL can in part be attributed to extensive security code review efforts, security code reviews, like any other assessment activity, have certain disadvantages. Being manually intensive and highly dependent on the individual skill level of the reviewers are some of the aspects that have prevented security code reviews from being broadly adopted. However, disadvantages such as these can be overcome by following best practices such as using a multi-pass approach, focusing on high priority code first, and establishing clear objectives before initiating the security code review process. When these best practices are followed, security code reviews can become a very powerful asset in application development team's security strategy. Lastly, the insights gleaned by Microsoft, which are incorporated in its SDL, and more specifically, in this presentation which focused on security code review, have been shared with each of you as a way for our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. This presentation content has been created by Eclipse Security LLC for Microsoft Corporation. 
For any questions or comments, please email inquiries at eclipsesecurityllc.com.